Good morning, we're learning Tractate Psachim, 7th chapter, we're starting the 7th chapter, and the name of this chapter is Keitzad Tzoyleim. Finally, we get to the actual roasting of the Kobun Pesach. Oh man, that's what I was waiting for. Yeah. Hey, have, bring the mustard. Did they have mustard with it? They have we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Now I really want to learn. <laughs> Terra commands it. Exodus 12, 9. That the Pesach offering not be eaten partially roasted or boiled. Partially roasted or boiled in water, but only fire roasted with its head, its legs, and its entrails. The Mishnah discusses the proper manner of fulfilling this requirement. So how do we roast the Pesach? That's why the name of this chapter is Keitzat Tzoylin. How do we roast? We bring a spit of pomegranate wood. The Gemara will explain why it doesn't have to be pomegranate. And one thrust it into the mouth of the carcass until it passes through its anus. And one places its legs and its entrails inside it. These are the words of Rabbi Yisya Glili. Rabbi Akiva, this is considered like a manner of cooking. Rather, we hang the legs and entrails from the spit outside the carcass. Mado sent me that today is the outside of, uh, of Osho ben Yaakov. Uh, Osho. Oh, today? today? Who's Asher? The Osho. son of Yaakov. Oh. Ah, yeah, Osho. Osho Shmeno Lachmo Vitem Badayin Melech. We should have a shirus. Yeah, oh, man, I said that's the time to down for shirus, a shirus. Amen. 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 to all, all Am Yisrael. Amen. Amen. Am Yisrael should have a shoes. Shoes in, in all in all the areas. Shoes is, is everything. Shoes in health. All those who need health. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Providing the excuse. Well, Thank you for providing the excuse. The reason, the reason. I mean, the reason. I think I said the reason. Excuse is the same gematria. There's always a reason to say the chayah. So, uh, how do we uh, roast the Pesach? We have a machlok between Rabbi Yisya and Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Yisya says the intestines, the entrails have to be inside it. Rabbi Akiva says, no, they have to hang. We hang the legs and entrails from the spit outside the carcass. The Mishnah continues, We may not roast the Pesach either on a metal spit or on a grill. There was an incident involving Rabban Gamliel, who said to Tobi, his slave, Say would slay on us a pesach al askil or go out and roast the pesach for us on the grill. Ooh, we'll find out in the next. So we have to see. Seemingly, it's a problem to um, do it on the grill. Mm-hmm. But it says in number six. The number six. The Gemara explains that since metal is a strong conductor of heat, when the portion of the spit that is exposed is heated by the fire, the portion that is covered by the carcass will also become hot. That's, that explains why we have to use the wooden um, pomegranate spit. Right. That portion will in turn roast with its own heat the part of the carcass that is touching it. Whereas the Torah states, barring any roasting agent other than fire, mm-hmm. it is for the same reason that the use of a grill is prohibited. This concern does not exist when a wooden spit is used, since wood is a poor conductor of heat. Okay. 
So that's the Mishnah. When he says Shomateches, let us bring a spit of metal. Let us bring a spit of metal to roast the carbon Pesach. So the Gemara says, I did the Chamek Tzosir Cham Kuloi. Since part of it becomes hot through exposure to the fire. So if this is the, uh, the spit and the meat is only capturing this part, so the side of it are getting hot from the fire. I did the Chamek Tzosir Cham Kuloi. Since part of it becomes hot, all of it become hot. Become metave, mechamas, hashapud, and the carcass will be partially roasted on account of the heat of the spit. And the Torah says, Tzli Eish. Rachman Omar Tzli Eish. The Torah clearly says that it needs to be fire roasted. Veloy Tzli mechamas, dovar acher, and not roasted on account of something else. So the Gemara concedes that a metal spit will not do. But wonders, why we must use specifically pomegranate wood? Why pomegranate wood? Let's use any wood. Hickory, chicory. <laughs> Why specifically pomegranate? The let us use a, let us bring a spit of palm wood. I did the easily shiva mafik my since palm wood has grooves, it secretes liquid. Okay. What does it mean? Has grooves? Not split grooves. <laughs> but that's, I guess, the I, smallest space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. It must have been a misprint. Yeah. It must have been a so, so, anyhow, it has some kind of a secret. Then it becomes mevushal, it becomes cooked. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to be cooked. Venesi shall tell you, know, what's wrong with fig wood? Spit of fig wood. The Gemara says similar answer. Aina the mechalchal mapik mayo. Since fig wood is hollow and it is, it is filled with sap, it secretes liquid. Vavali kambushal. The same issue when an animal is roasted on a fig wood spit, as though it is cooked. So also a problem that's going to be cooked. So the Gemara says, okay, fine. We can't use palm, we can't use fig. What about alon? Alon is sycamore. Venesa shall alon, shall chow, shall shikma. Let us bring a spit of oak. That's alon. Alon is oak. And uh, shikma is sycamore. Vishal shikma. Of carob, of, or sycamore. Shall chow. Uh, so three options. The Gemara says alon, oak, chow, carob, and shikma, sycamore. The Gemara says, I did the East Bay Kit today, Mapik Maya. Since they have nuts which must be cut off, they secrete liquid also. Hmm. So the Gemara says, Nuts, the pomegranate also has nuts. Shulimo Nami is Bay Kit today. Pomegranate wood also has nuts and should similarly be unsuitable. So the Gemara says, Shie Kitre. Its nuts are smooth. And do not need to be cut off. V boy Seymour, you prefer say, which means the Mishnah is dealing with a spit cut from a pomegranate sapling in its first year, which does not yet have any nuts. So the Gemara says, but even so, there is the incision where the spit is severed from the tree and it secretes. Liquid from that incision. The method of alleviating that concern is that one leaves the incision where it is severed protruding from the mouth of the animal and any secretion drips to the ground. So even though there is some liquid, some secretion comes out of this pomegranate wood, it's going to go into the ground and as we said, wood does not transmit any with any uh, liquid. Uh, I guess wood does does not is not a conductor of heat. That's what he's saying. Wood actually transmit liquid, but is not a conductor of heat. So, having explained the reasoning behind the Mishnah, why specifically pomegranate wood must nisin the lake Rabbi Yehuda, it says the Mishnah is not 
in accord with Rabbi Yehuda. The Tanya. What is Rabbi Yehuda saying? Rabbi Yehuda saying, 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 just as a wooden spit is not burnt when inserted in an animal that is suspended over fire, so to a metal spit does not become hot. So in those circumstances, if you're putting the metal according to Rabbi Yehuda, it does not become hot and therefore it does not roast the animal. So why would you prohibit? So Rabbi Yehuda obviously is not following the Mishnah that says you should not use the metal spit. That makes sense to me, Rabbi Yehuda. If you're sticking the metal rod from the mouth all the way to the back. But look what they answer him. They say, Omulei, they said to Rabbi Yehuda, Zeh, this, this one, the metal spit, Cham Iktsosei Cham Kulei. When part of it becomes hot, all of it becomes hot. Vizeh, but that one, a wooden spit, when part of it becomes hot, all of it does not become hot. And I give you the very uh, simple example. You're putting a, a, a metal pot on the fire. If it's metal, you need to have gloves when you pick up the, the pot, even though it has, it has ears. Right. The ears of the pot, they hands. become hot also, especially if you have a, a metal... <laughs> A, a cast iron pot. Well, then you're talking hot, hot. There you go. So we said, part of it becomes hot, it, it's a conductor of heat throughout the whole pot. So it, 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 we know, we see the Mishnah does not follow Rabbi Yudha, that's for sure. Okay. Then it says, when is in a scrub, and one places its legs and its entrails, its intestines inside it. These are the words of Rabbi Yisya Glili, right? And Rabbi Akiva says, no, this is a, it, it's a manner of cooking to put the intestines inside. Obviously, they would wash off the intestines, they would go through it later. But according to Rabbi Yisya Glili, they washed off the intestines and later they put them back into the stomach. Somehow they closed the stomach and then they would put it roasting on the fire. So Rabbi said, that's how you should do it. Rabbi Akiva says, that's a matter of cooking. And it's almost like stuffing. You're stuffing something. So Rabbi Akiva says that this is considered like a manner of cooking. Rather, we hang the legs and entrails from the spit outside the carcass. Tanya, Rabbi Shmuel, Kareu, Tuch, Tuch. Rabbi Shmuel would call the roasted Pesach offering Tuch Tuch. Rabbi Tafon Koreu Gidim Akulas. And Rabbi Tafon would call it a helmet, helmeted kid. Helmeted kid. What is Tuch Tuch? It says in number 11, Rabbi Shmuel holds like Rabbi Yisegli that the legs and innards were roasted inside the body cavity. When heated in the confined area, they would make a noise suggestive of the sound tuch tuch. It's like, uh, I guess, a roasting sound. Oh, it's one of the next words. Like food would make noise, it make a noise suggestive of sound tuch tuch, like food boiling in a covered pot. Since toich in the Hebrew word, is the Hebrew word for inside, Rabbi Shmuel would employ a play on words and refer to the roasted offering as toich toich, that it needs to be inside. Comes the Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Tafon gives it a name, Gdimikulus. What is Gdimikulus? Armored kid in Consonance with Rashi, the reference in both cases is to a roasted Pesach offering. Having mentioned the Gdi Mekulas helmeted kid, the Gemara turns to another rule concerning it. Tan Rabbon, Ezel Gdi Mekulas. What's that? What says a kid? You mean like a kid, like a baby goat? 
Baby goat, yes. Gedi is a baby goat, yeah. Kid Makulis. They had the Korban Pesach was two options, either a goat or a sheep. So Tanu Rabbonu is a Gedi Makulis. The Gemara says, what is the helmeted kid? The Osu Lechu Valel Pesach was one of them that may not be eaten on the Seder night of Pesach nowadays in our time. Which one is, uh, we're not allowed to eat Korban Pesach. Don't have the Pesach Mikdash. So which one cannot, we cannot eat on the night of Pesach? Kol shesloi kulo ke'echad. Any animal that is roasted in its entirety as one unit. So if you make, on Erev Pesach, you make a barbecue and you're roasting a, a goat or a sheep in your backyard. Or a pomegranate spit. Even though, even if you if you if you didn't uh, do even it on the grill, on the grill, there's a, there's a question whether you should eat it on Pesach night or not because it resembles Korban Pesach. So he tells you if you roasted it in its entirety as one unit, nechtach meno ever if one of its limbs was cut off, nishlak meno ever or if its its limbs was bless you its its limbs was boiled. Even if the remainder was roasted over fire, the moment that one limb is missing or a one part of the, the animal was cooked, it's not under the category of helmeted kid. And you're off the hook. Yeah. <laughs> Ashtash regarding a case in which one of its limbs was cut off. The Afal Gav, the Kamet Vele Behad Bahadei, even though the severed limb is roasted together. The severed limb is roasted together with the rest of the animal. Omar Tloi, you say this is not considered a helmeted goat. Nishlak Mi Baya, is it necessary to state this regarding a case where one of its limbs was boiled? So you understand the question? They say, if you tell me that one of his limbs was missing and it's not considered helmeted goat anymore, it was cooked. It was roasted together with the, but it was separ separated from the animal. It's not considered helmeted goat. So how much more so that one of the limbs was cooked in water? So it says, we need to mention it because we deal with a case well, it was a very unique barbecue machine that, uh, that the barbecue was roasting, part of it was roasting and part of it was cooking at the same time. Boiled, what? Is this talking about being boiled? Boiled? And yeah. part of it is being boiled so and part a, of it is being... A, I guess you had a pot underneath so it would go around. No, they have, they have barbecues what? today that have the side has a burner. There's a barbecue. One side right. burning, one side cooking. Yeah. Anyhow, so the, oh, so one side is cooked. Yeah, part on that so he wants to say that in such a case, it's not considered a a, a kid, helmeted kid. Since the Mishnah cited the, an opinion that that legs, that the legs and entrails are roasted inside the animal, the opinion of Isaac Lily. I'm a rabbi. So, so the Gemara chooses here to discuss a related halachic issue. I'm a rabbi haimu a roasted animal that is stuffed with raw meat, with raw meat is permitted for consumption. What does it mean? Ordinarily in 17, meat must be heavily salted before it is cooked in order to purge it, to purge its blood, which may not be consumed. Meat that will be roasted must be only lightly salted. Okay, so cooked meat has to be heavily salted and roasted meat does not have to be heavily, just lightly salted. Since the intense heat of the fire helps purge the blood during the roasting. So Rabbah teaches that meat that was salted only enough for roasting 
may be used as the stuffing for an animal or bird that will be roasted, even though the stuffing will not be exposed directly to the fire. Others explain that meat which will be roasted does not need salting at all, for the reason explained above, there below, that the, that the fire does the job. And we are dealing with meat that is totally unsalted. So what is the chidush over here? One second, what is the chidush over here? That meat, Rabba teaches that meat that was salted only enough for roasting may be used as stuffing for an animal or bird that will be roasted. Even though the inside is not going to get as hot. Exactly. What were you asking? Before this all happens, part of the kashering process uses salt to draw out the blood. So we're not worried about, about it being trafical because of the blood. Because the blood's going to get drawn out by the heat, the heat of the fire. But he, even if not, even if not, you, that's you know that blood to uh, eat. You know that the liver, if, if you like to eat liver, you shech to the bird, you take out the liver, you can put it directly on the fire. You don't have to do, there's no, uh, uh, there's no salting, rinsing, salting. Directly take it, put it on the fire. So it could be that back then they didn't uh, mandate it or they didn't force everyone oh, to so, so the meat to. You say you want it depends what you want to do with the salt with the meat. You want to salt it, you want you want to uh, roast yeah, it, roast you it. put a little bit of salt on it and okay. lightly salt it. You want to cook it and you put go through the whole rigorous uh, process. It could be that they still wanted the the ashroya the the, the, the uh, immersing it in water for a while. Um, to clean off any kind of lifeblood, because because uh, the lifeblood is the issue. Every meat, even if you buy a steak now from the store, you'll still see blood in it. For yeah. sure. But that's that's the dama tamtis. That's the essence, the blood, the essence blood. They say if you're gonna if you're gonna marinate a steak, for example, don't put salt in the marinade because it's gonna draw out all the juices and you'll dry it out. By the time you what about all the other things that you put in the in the in the Salt has certain characters of drying right, out. Yeah, but so well, the garlic doesn't have yeah, it. The spice is red. I don't think garlic no. does have No, I don't believe so. Onion, all these other things don't have it. It adds flavor. The salt draws out though. Uh -huh. it, it becomes dry and tough. But how do they age meat? They age meat with salting, no? We don't have any aging. The jerky. I haven't gotten that far, mate. <laughs> My next 70 years, I'm like, <sighs> So anyhow, so it says, Amar Rabbi Muta Shario, a roasted animal that is stuffed with raw meat, is permitted for consumption. Okay. Amar Rabbi Ve'aka Bola Dom, but the animal absorbs blood from the raw meat. And this is a concept that we see a lot in the laws of Kashus, that the, this statement, remember these words, uh, just as it absorbs the blood, so does it discharges that which it absorbs. So you telling me that I'm putting raw meat inside roasted animal, and we're going to roast the animal, the raw meat is going to excrete blood and the, ro the animal being roasted is now going to absorb that blood. It wants to, don't worry, it's going to absorb it correct, but it's going to spit it out as well. It's going to discharge it as well. Name of Messiah, shall we see that our Mishnah supports Rabba? For it states, Rabba said that when we roast the Pesach, we place its legs and, and its entra entrails inside it. My time, and what is the reason that we are not concerned for the absorption of blood? 
Love me shum damrinan kevoy lukach poltoi. Is it not because we say that just as the animal absorbs the blood, so does it discharges that which it absorbs. Amrei, he say shani also. There, in the Mishnah's case, it is different. Kevon de ika beisa shchita. Since there is the place where the slaughter was done, the inside, the in. Incised. The incised it's neck, cut. right? The incision. The incision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The mechal which is hollow, and which faces downward during roasting. What? They don't turn it on the spit? They did, but I think he was saying that they, they would um, position the animal in, in an incline, yeah, so that the head will be lower, and, and if there's any blood that comes out, it will drain throughout the right, uh, roasting right. process. A decline. Yeah, on one, and the tush is higher, and the, the, the head is low, I guess. So, since there is the place where the slaughter was done, which is hollow and which faces downward during roasting. It's referencing us to note 2. It says in note 2, the point of the spit is th- the point of the spit is thrust into the mouth so that after the spit is fully inserted the thicker end will protrude will protrude the carcass mm. it will protrude now the carcass can be suspended over the fire with the head angled downward so that's the in, in the head angled downward and it will not slip off the spit. This enables the animal's blood to drain freely through the incision in the neck. That's the interpretation of Tosfot, and the spit must be protruded from the anus as well, so that it can be supported at both ends. Okay. So with that we're going to 74b1. Made of dive, the blood flows out. The Gemara attempts again to find Tanaik support for Rava's ruling. Name of Sayale, shall we say that the following Baita supports Rava? Halev Koroi Umoitsias Dome, the heart. One tears it open and extracts its blood before cooking it. Loikroi, if one did not tear it, if, it, if one did not tear it open before cooking it, one tears it open after it's cooking, and it is permitted for consumption. They use the word tear it. They don't, it's not sliced with a knife, it's not cut. What's the Hebrew word? It's also cut. To make, a, to make an, an incision, to make a cut. Oh, to, or to tearing rip it up. refers to yeah. splitting apart. But if you... Yeah. So if they can do it with the hand, do it with the hand. If they can't, I guess they can do it with a knife. Okay. But he, if he doesn't do it before, he can do it after the cooking. That's what he's trying to tell us. My mm-hmm. timer, what is the reason that it is permitted? Why during the cooking, during the cooking, it presumably, presumably absorbs some of the blood that was inside the heart. So the Gemara says, again, because of the rule, Kevoy loy kach poltoy loy mishlav mishum damrinan, because we say that just as it absorbs the blood, so does it discharge the blood. Shani Lev, the Shia, the heart is different because it is smooth and does not absorb blood at all. Okay. It says in number three, even if it was actually cooked in a pot without having been uh, torn open, it is permitted. The Gemara cites a possible Amoraic precedent for Rabbah's ruling. Ravin, the elder, breeded a certain... Breadcrumbs. Breaded a certain young dove for Rav and roasted it. Okay? It's like you're making a schnitzel. They put uh, uh, breadcrumbs over it. So... 
he breaded a certain young dove for Rav and roasted it. And Rav told them, If its breading is good tasting, give me some and I will eat it. Now the breading presumably absorbed some blood from the dove during the roasting. And Rav nevertheless considered it permissible. He wasn't always only seemingly was only concerned about the taste of it. Just as it absorbed, so does it a, a discharge. So the support is rejected. I besimed bes me do. That dove was covered with breading made of fine flour. Demi porir, which is crumbly and allows the blood to escape. Having failed to support Rabbi's ruling, the Gemara proceeds to question whether it was accepted by other Amoiroim. Rabbi once visited the houses of Reish Galusa, the exiliarch. Utaflu leba And the exiliarch in exile. XX. Yeah. And they breaded a young go a goose for him and roasted it. Sounds tasty, right? I'm not a big fan of it. I never tasted goose. Kind of game. I, I keep buying them, but I never, I never, I never kill them. Because there's a story of the goose that laid the golden egg. Oh yeah, you're waiting for the golden egg. Yeah. I have 4,621 geese now. I have the reverse no problem. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whiskey toy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, my. Had I not seen that the gravy absorbed in the bread was as clear as white glass, I would have not eaten of it. What is he telling him? He, he goes to the house of the exilia. They breaded the young goose and roasted it. He said, if not, had I not seen that the gravy absorbed in the bread, what is the gravy? The gravy is the, 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 uh, blood. the blood. So that's why he said it only if it's white as glass. There was blood in it. With as clear as white glass, I would have not, meaning he saw it there, I would have not an ear of, or I would have not eaten eaten of it. Right. It says in number seven, the if the bread had even a hint of reddishness, which would indicate that it contained some blood, I would not have eaten of it. I ate only because the gravy remaining in the bread after the roasting was perfectly clear indicating that all the blood had been expelled. Okay. He makes sense. He's, he's the rich galusa of the exile. So the blood also was expelled. Only yeah. the blood was also yeah. expelled. All in exile. But, but he says, if you follow the rule that the same way that it absorbs, the same way it discharge, then why does he, he's wor why is he even worried about the uh, Blood looking uh, flower. My area, Kizig, what is the point of Rava's emphasizing that he, would, that he would eat such breading only when the gravy is clear as white glass? Even when it is not clear, he should be willing, he should also be willing to eat from it. The presumption would be that the roasting caused the bread to discharge any blood that it absorbed. But if we follow the rule, that anything that is absorbed is going to be discharged. Why are you, why are you caring about it? looking like white glass? It's not looking like... So the, the, bread, the blood would be in the, in the breading. But the, if you follow that rule, the, it means the blood would come out, would definitely uh, be discharged. Out of the bird, not out of the... Out of the, of the flower thing. as well, because the same oh. way that the flower absorbed the blood, the flower absorbed the blood from the, from the goose, so the, the flower would also discharge the blood. How did the, how did the flower absorb the, the, the uh, blood from the goose? Through the roasting, right? Yes. So the, through the roasting, it also leaves the, 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 the breaded 
flour, this breaded their goose. So the Gemara answers over there, it was a different case. What happened there? Also, Bechivarto de Shorir. There, the goose was covered with breading made of white flour, which is firm and does not readily discharge that which is absorbed. Remember, before we said, we said that Smida, Smida is a breading made of fine flour. Fine flour is mipori, which is crumbly and allows the blood to escape. But this one is chivarto, the, so, the, the shorir, which is a very firm type of flour, white flour, and, and, and does not readily discharge mm. that which it absorbs. Well, that's what it's called, white glass, because it's, uh, it, it made like an impenetrable... So if it was clear, then he would eat it. If it's not, but hilchata, what's the halacha? And the halacha is as follows. The smido, when the breading is made of very fine flour, whether it turned red or did not turn red, it is permitted because we follow the rule, the way it absorbed, this is the way it is charged. The chivat, when the breading is made of white flour, which is, the, I guess, the cheaper flour, if it is clear as white glass, it is permitted. What is white glass, by the way? You know, they had the certain glass that was uh, expensive glass. It looked white. Mm-hmm. So, if if not, we did if we're dealing with white flour, and the glass is clear, it's like the color is clear as white glass. You're allowed to uh, enjoy that goose. Eloy osir, and if it's not, it's forbidden. Meaning, if yet there is some red in, it, uh, uh, red in the flour, it's forbidden. The shar kemochim, when the breading is made of other types of flour, asmik also loy asmik shori. If it turned red, it is forbidden. If it did not turn red, it is permitted. Haim also concerning a roasted animal that is stuffed with raw meat. Man de osa filu pumo le sachas, the one who forbids it, forbids it even if it is roasted with its opening facing downward. Uman de shore filu pumo and the one who permits. It permits it even if it is roasted with its opening facing upward. What's the halacha? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Roasted animal that is stuffed with raw meat is permitted even if it is roasted with its opening facing upward. So, you know what's, uh, I'm surprised to ask a question. Who's, who's the one saying the one thing and who's the one saying the other thing? I'm sure they'll get to it. Okay. Umtza. But we have the, the Rabba who said that the, the concept of boilo kachpolte, the way it is char- the way it absorbed, the way it, that's the way it is charged, and, and that's the basis for permitting uh, a, a raw meat in inside roasted meat. Right now, the only thing that I just asked. Okay. The Gemara we'll discuss other foods in which uh, the possible presence of blood is a factor. Umtza, a piece of raw meat into which blood has oozed. <laughs> okay? Has happened. Mm. 16. Uh, there you go. B.A. Echimosis. Testicles, umizlike, and the major arteries of animals. You have eight testicles? Yeah. In, uh... Where? I need to send some to the, to the stuff in the Congress. I think it was in Eretz Israel. From Israel? I think so. Was it good? Uh, it tasted like tough matzo balls. Tough matzo balls. <laughs> so you wouldn't eat it again. That was the, that was the consistency. No, I, I'm going to have to try things once. <laughs> okay. So beer. Or mislike, imagine the arteries of the, the animals. I had the scotch, then you would have been able to eat it more. Pligi, bo, rav, ochover, ovina. 
are the, the subjects of dispute between Ravach and Ravina. What are they disputing? Uh, what are they arguing? Throughout the entire Torah, wherever these Amirim disagree in their opinions, oh, there you go. Whenever these Amirim disagree and their opinions are cited anonymously, Ravacha is the one who holds a, the stringent view, and Ravina is the one who holds the lenient view. Always follow Ravina in accordance with its lenient view. Levar Mehanit Las, except for these three subjects just mentioned. The Ravacha Lekula, the Ravina Lechumwa. In these three cases, Ravacha takes the lenient position and Ravina takes the more stringent position, the more stringent view. And since and that's and Allah follows of Acha in accordance with its lenient view. Hai umtza de asmik concerning a, a piece of meat that turned red on account of an oozing blood from a vein. See, from a vein. If one cut and salted it. It is permitted even for cooking in a pot. If one roasted it on a spit, it is permitted for consumption, made of doyev because the blood flows out during the roasting. If one placed it on hot coals for roasting, Avacha Baravina disagree about it. Chad Osar Vechad Shori. One of them forbids it and the other one permits it. Man de Osar meets me some. It's the one who forbids it, says that the heat of the coals makes it shrivel and it retains the collected blood. Uman de Shori Misham Shori, but the one who permits it contends that the heat draws out the blood. Heat shrivels it. Uh, okay, so oh, the pat the basin. Talinu beshipuda shayon. If one suspended them from a spit for roasting, they are permitted for consumption. Made of doyev because the blood flows out during the roasting. If one placed them on hot coals for um, roasting, Ravacha and Ravina disagree about the matter. One of them forbids the testicles and the other one permits them. Again, the same, the same logic behind their views. The one who forbids them says that the heat of the coals makes them shrivel and they retain blood. But the one who permits them contends that the heat draws out the blood. And similarly with regard to the major arteries of the neck. He says, major arteries of the neck, if one cut and salted them, they are permitted even for cooking in a pot. If one suspended the animal from a spit for roasting, and he positioned the place where the slaughter was done, the incised neck facing downward, surely the arteries are permitted for consumption, made of dough because the blood flows out through the incision. Achte. If one placed them on hot coals for roasting, Ravach and Ravina disagree about the matter. Chadosa vechachori, a one permitted and one forbid. One forbids the arteries and the other permits them. Man de Osa omits me. Some is the one who forbids them, says that the heat um, of the coals makes them shrivel and they retain blood. And one who permits 
contains that the heat draws the blood, and the halacha is that the heat draws out the blood. Ayi umtza de asmik, concerning a piece of meat that turned red on account of an oozing of blood from a vein. Chali osir, its gravy is forbidden. Lo yasmik, if it did not turn red, it has no sign of an oozing of blood. Chali shori, its gravy is permitted. Rabbi Noam, afilu lo yasmik, nami, even if it did not turn red, chali osir, the gravy is forbidden. Because it is inconceivable that the gravy does not retain, does not contain streaks of blood. Interesting. Um, what happens if you take a steak, I don't know, an ounce or two ounce steak, two uh, uh, inch steak, and you put it on the on the on the barbecue? That's a three inch steak. But go ahead. Put on the barbecue. <laughs> And underneath it, you put some kind of a plate to collect uh, the juices that come out of right. the meat. Question, if you're allowed to eat those juices, uh-huh. why? Why there is a question? You say, well, I salted the, the, it went through a cashew, so it went through the whole thing. So over here it says, I um so they asked me a piece of meat that turned red on account of an oozing blood from the vein. Chali also, its gravy is forbidden. Its gravy is forbidden. Lo yasmik, if it did not turn red, it has no sign of an oozing of blood. Chali show, its gravy is permitted. Ravina Oma, Ravina says, I feel lo yasmik nami, even if it did not turn red, I cannot use the, I, the gravy is forbidden. You heard what Ravina, Ravina says? Yeah, but we don't go by him. <laughs> it says that we don't go with it. No, he said in. Because he's lean. In, we go with the stringent. You go by right. the Ravacha. Ravacha right. is lean. But in this, three cases, on, he was. On Sunday, I made a, a big fat uh, ribeye steak and made it in a pan in the, in the oven and on and stove top. There's a way to do it. Yeah, he told me the whole thing. I'm has gonna, really, I'm, so juicy. I'm going to be stove top. with him. Uh, first, you did it in first, the oven and then. First, you're on the stove top for two minutes. Then you flip it over and put it in the oven. For six minutes and then take it out, flip it over again. All the juices and the crust this is all chef, This is Chef Ruvain here. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I gave my wife a big piece and disappeared. <laughs> I have to see the Chaim tonight's my wife's birthday. Oh. Why would you wait till tonight? Huh? He wants to say the Chaim. He said, Why would you wait till tonight? Exactly. His mother in law was in labor today. Yeah. <laughs> A batch of producer's wife. Yeah. Why waste the opportunity? Just a very little for me, please. So, so one second. So we have, according to Ravina, even if it, the gravy did not turn red, the gravy is forbidden. Why? Because in his opinion, EF shall the lace with Shuyoki Dama, it is inconceivable that the gravy does not contain streaks of blood. It says in 27, Ravina follows his own stringent view presented above that roasting on coals does not purge all the blood. You see, it's not fire. It's, that's why I said barbecue, because barbecue is also you using the, uh, the heat of the coals. You don't want it to be purged. So, and hence a red, reddened piece of meat that was roasted on coals is forbidden. Here it states that even if an ordinary piece of meat is roasted on coals, the gravy that trickles out when it is cut is forbidden. Okay, so let's go back. Father Amema used to swallow it. Swallow what? 28, he would swallow the gravy of roasted meat that had not turned red, or the vinegar in which the meat was soaked. Why the meat was soaked in vinegar? I don't know. Draw out blood. That would draw out the blood. But it's, not it says it's a nice sort. It, it makes it not so uh, dry. Maybe. All right, let's see. So, Ika de Amre Ravashi Gufi Magma de Ravashi himself used to. It says the vinegar it. in which the meat is soaked draws out the remaining traces of blood. Where? Just above that, at the end of note 27, the last three lines. Ah, okay. 
according to Rashi, seconds of Kshanas, the vinegar which the meat is soaked draws out the remaining traces of blood which thereby become permitted. But isn't it uh, also uh, causing a certain taste or smell, uh, vinegar? Mm. You think, no? Vinegar is strong. Do you ever eat pickles? Why, so yeah, pickled you like meat. <laughs> yeah, pickled meat. I don't know. I, I never know. made it this way. I'm happy to try it. <laughs> So Amale Bavashi Ma Bal Amema Lavashi Hai Khalo the Khalit Bay Khado Zimna any vinegar in which he soaked roasted meat once to draw out the blood to Laitani Khalit Bay he would not soak roasted meat in it uh, again. Since the vinegar loses its potency after one use. Mai Shnome Khalo Mesamu de Khaltina Bay Why is this different? Then vinegar, which is naturally weak, in which we uh, we do soak roasted meat. Why is this different than vinegar, which is naturally weak, in which we do soak roasted meat? Hosom isay, in the case of weak vinegar, isay lekiua de feirobeine achalesa lekiua de feirobeine. The natural strength of the fruit is present. The vinegar has not released any of its inherent strength, although its taste become less sharp through the passage of time, it retains all of its potency to draw out blood. The fruit to which the Gemara refers to is the wine from which the vinegar has made. Whereas here, in the case of the vinegar that was once used, the natural strength of the fruit is not present. The meat that was previously soaked drew out the vinegar's potency. Bukhim Tia will continue tomorrow. Yes,